we have made a lot of videos of various aspects of middle game, end game, and most of it, of course, mo most of all about the openings. But I had enormous amount of requests of uh, <coughs> making for making uh, DVDs to teach people how they can learn how to study and how to how to improve gradually. Well, obviously, just playing openings correctly is not enough, and just learning certain combinations, tactics, and end games. That's not enough either, because there are other aspects of the game, such as uh, developing plan, finding the right criteria for searching moves, for searching plans. And for that, we have special school, school that teaches you how to do all that. and. There is only one right way to do it, and that's what that's the way I learned, because I was fortunate enough to uh, grow up uh, uh, in Russia, the best country for uh, playing chess, for learning chess. I don't know what el what else is it best for, but that's about it, maybe. So. There is only one correct way to play, to learn chess. And I learned it, uh, I, I realized that when I saw, after I came to the uh, United States and I saw some people, a lot of people, a lot of good players, even good players, they were self-taught. And when you are self-taught, obviously it's not as uh, you cannot achieve as great of a results. And finally, what happens with a good chess player, he becomes better and better and better. The, he becomes better because he realizes what is missing in his game. And what is missing in his game, those are the components that's supposed to be installed in his chess skill bank in the very, very beginning. And then you progress, if, if it's done that way, you progress a lot quicker and uh, become, eventually you become a lot better player. So, we know that what Russian school tells you, uh, you have to develop pieces quickly and castle. But that tell, every chess school tells you this. Even uh, if you had to guess by yourself, you can uh, come to this conclusion. But there are a lot more other things. While you develop peace, you have to develop pieces in a proper position. Coordinate those pieces properly. They, these pieces have to be very active but that's not enough to be very active because single piece alone, if it's active, it doesn't do much well. It has also to very well coordinate with your other pieces. For example, when we see <coughs> some development like this. So I'm just randomly uh, putting pieces out. So then white develops, black develops, white castles, black castles. Okay, now pieces are developed, but you can notice that white pieces developed much better. And now, how many components do we have here for evaluating this position? There are several. First of all, white has, and I explained it on my uh, previous DVDs, that white has here space advantage. Space advantage means that white has four and a half ranks. You see, white has 
up to the center well if you see this rank fourth rank and half of the fifth rank you see that's half of the fifth rank so white pieces are better placed for example dark square bishop is open to be developed on active position while blacks dark square bishop is not white light square bishop developed very well on a good diagonal blacks dark square bishop light square bishop does not have any good square to be developed on for example d7 is not a great square e6 is not available f5 is not available and g4 square is very temporary it's good only for one move because after f3 black's bishop has to go to not so active position so this is so both both sides did the right thing they both developed pieces but developing of one side was a lot more successful now okay we determined uh, who is better and why now that's far from being enough now what do we do and what should black supposed to do it's a simple clear-cut logic when you have space advantage you have to try to gradually gradually uh, get, uh, advance and make this space advantage grow and what black supposed to do black supposed to neutralize white's uh, space advantage now let's get plans for both sides I will detail the plans I will tell you what white supposed to do in complete in concrete details and then there will be you will have definite 100% correct plan but you will have several ways to follow with this. If you, if you gave this position to very strong player, what the strong player will, different strong players will pursue, maybe place differently this position, but they are both will be, they're all will be within the plan. I'm just gonna explain it to you. What white has to do, obviously, you cannot think about gaining uh, space advantage before the rule number one that everyone knows and if you don't know it you are not supposed to be watching this video you are supposed to conclude development white's rook is not developed white's bishop is not developed the other rook is not good and queen is not um, uh, developed so first well we have to do we have to conclude our development and bring all pieces in the game and again let's take one good player the way he may think he well he has to do if anyone would think that let me go now f3 g4 and try to expand on a king side this is a terrible mistake this is bad and this is a wrong plan but once you know what your wrong plan is right plan is then there are several ways to go with it and none of them will be a uh, will be mistake but you have to use criteria your goals so I would say bishop f4 will be okay, followed by queen d2, followed by rook d1, followed by rook e1. This is 
correct way to uh, one of the correct ways to play and it this is within the our plan well but that's not the only plan of course you don't want to go bishop e3 because give black a tempo with knight g4 the other correct plan you may play knight takes c6 b takes c and then play bishop f4 intending to develop the same way and on top of everything you may intend to play e5 now you see you have to know within um, uh, within the Russian school of chess there are many different components one of them is a pawn structure now how you integrate all these different kinds of ide ideas in one game in one thinking well we know that double pawns are not necessarily always bad they are bad for, ex for instance I will show you the position those double pawns are not that bad for black but these double pawns are very bad for black because those double pawns are just isolated and these double pawns now they are part of a three pawn chain three pawn chain so okay so what you're doing but you cannot play here for pawn structure neglecting development no we are doing knight takes c6 pawn takes and now bishop f4 so we continue developing and want to get e5 to uh, isol try to isolate it black's double pawns so this is on the list of things that are very good for white that's another way to play now what is the other way to are there any other ways to play yes for example there is knight e2 now this move also falls into the general plan although it's not developing the new piece now why why because if we talk from black's point uh, from black side we think for black what black should do here when they don't have uh, when they have space disadvantage black supposed to exchange some pieces and always that's the general rule when you have space disadvantage it's difficult for you to place pieces on good squares because you have limited number of squares and then you will have you will have to try to exchange some pieces but well, that's exactly what white does white does the opposite to interfere with black's plan they do this and then they're going to continue development this is also right thing to do one of the plans is so, knight e2 bishop f4 or knight takes c6 followed by bishop f4 those are all logical continuations but i can assure you that there is no way anyone can find logical continuation without assessing position correctly so what do i have what my advantages what my disadvantages and based on that you build logical plan that's the only way chess supposed to be played only way chess supposed to be learned and only way chess supposed to be thought so that's the correct way of thinking i don't want to go too deep with this position my goal was to show one of the examples how pieces are developed how pieces are developed 
coordinated and how thinking supposed to go. Now, let me tell you one of the most dangerous ways of thinking in chess. I have met a lot of players of all levels, beginning from, I know, very weak players, like uh, next to beginners, and ending to the masters, already masters, rated 22, 2300 even. And it's very, very difficult. The stronger player is within this range I just mentioned, the more difficult for him uh, to change his thinking. Because he did not start thinking correctly when he was learning chess, and it's like a child. It's for child, it's easy to learn language when he was almost baby than to learn when you are, once you are 20 years old. So what was wrong with them? Sometimes they play openings, for example, that have nothing to do with normal chess criteria, how to play game. They play opening like this and they say that this is good opening. So they play, they put white, black pieces this way, and they say it's very good. Now, I have news for these players. This can be played by super strong players because they know all about strategy and tactics. Uh, but when you want to learn chess, that's not the way you play because the, you get wrong, absolutely wrong ideas about goals in chess, about the way games should be played, and about your progress. So only very strong player that already went through all this school can play this because he is not in a mode of learning chess. But guess what? Pl strong players that know game very well, I couldn't find anyone who was willing to play this position for black. So therefore, that's a bad way to play for many standpoints. First of all, you are not going to learn anything about it, about the game. Secondly, you are uh, getting wrong ideas of priorities in, uh, in the chess and in development. And most importantly, you're just going to have bad position. So this is not the right way of thinking. So chess, the way chess is supposed to be played, in the openings there are, well, let's start with the opening. Every part of the game has some general rules. Well, in the opening, besides developing your pieces quickly, safeguarding your king by castling, there are other ideas such as um, confronting your opponent in the center to establish some uh, space for you. So you cannot be, for example, that's why we don't want to play for black like this and being very cramped. This is very bad position and I, I, I'm going to tell you that in the hands of a strong experienced player for white it's almost sudden death. So you have to be very competitive in its center. You have to be aware of quick development and those are like a ABCs of what is opening about. But we are not going to go through various different openings and I'm not going to teach you 
how to play openings in uh, on this DVD. No, we have done that already, and we will do it in the future as well. But this is, the, I'm trying here to get some people to think, to start thinking correctly, and to be thought chess correctly. I was fortunate, I had great teacher uh, when I was starting playing chess, I start when I started playing chess, and I had a great teacher, and I thought, wow, and he, he was so clearly explaining me everything, everything that I just told you myself, and I thought I have uh, the best teacher I have ever there is anywhere in the world. Well, only much, much, much later, I realized that all he did, and it was a good teacher, of course, but all he did, it's a fo he followed already very well-known, uh, developing very well-known ideas of how to teach chess developed by Russian chess school. But why? Why Russian chess school was on such a high level comparing to any others. Well, are Russians are much smarter than any other nation? Absolutely not. The reason why was because the chess was the number one uh, activity, maybe in chess, uh, in, in Russia, and it was put on a very high uh, level of importance by government. So government couldn't entertain people many different ways and give them a lot of pleasure in life some other way. So they developed this great chess school. They, they, school, they put it, they hired the highest level professionals and they put it scientific way. So and once they endorsed this way of learning chess and teaching chess, it showed results. Well, along with the, uh, with the support of the um, um, government, Russian chess players started uh, using this school and they were dominant force for many years in the world. And they still are now. And that's what I think is the most important uh, a reason for Russian domination in chess from, uh, I don't know, from 20s, 1920s to 19, uh, to, to current days, I would say for current to current days. Well, uh, now let's start talking about different ideas and different important points of Russian chess uh, school.